All right, guys, Adam Trigger here from Wager Talk. It's time for another college basketball preview. We are doing 30 of these in 30 days, every single day of October, leading up to tip-off on November 4th. And I've brought my friend Kai McKeon back from Three Man Weave to help me out again with another Mountain West team, another team I got to go see last year. Actually knocked these two, knocked those two teams out on the same day. I flew to Denver for one day. I went and saw Air Force early, Colorado State late, and then flew back home. But it was a great day. And um, so welcome in, Kai. Appreciate your time. Uh, and just tell the people where they can find you, what's going on at the burner, and everything you guys got going on this year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Three Man Weave is now partnered with Trilly Donovan, uh, the, the scoops man himself, the anonymous scoops guy on Twitter. Uh, but he has a Discord. It's the best college basketball community you can join. Uh, basically a chat room with, with channels uh, to hang out, get betting info, talk about college basketball. But our previews are now going to live there uh, in the Discord on a website called BurnerExclusives.com. You can find all 364 team previews on that site. Pretty much a thousand words on every single team written by me, Jim, and Matt. Uh, that's only six bucks a month right now. Pretty good price in my opinion, especially for in comparison to what you'll find out in the market. Uh, we put a lot of effort into these. We think it's a really good resource, and we're excited to share it with everybody. Yeah, it's incredible. It is by far the best six dollars a month you'll spend if you are trying to do research in, in, in college basketball during the season, before the season, you know, at, at any point in time. Kai, I mean, I've been reading your guys' previews for years. There's never been a, a time where I haven't referenced them back, like in February and March. Like, I, I, it's it's so I want to make that clear. This is. A phenomenal resource, not only just like to prepare for the season, but throughout the season. And the Discord is is awesome. I, I've been in there. I've checked it out. So go check that out. Um, it, it's great. Everyone that's doing their own research should be part of that. And you know, six dollars a month is is nothing. So phenomenal thing you guys have going there. All right, we're talking Air Force Falcons, and you know, I kind of joked a second ago. We did the Colorado State preview. Uh, I, I like was like all over the place, didn't have huge opinions. And it's like when you're dealing with 360 some odd college basketball teams in division one, and then I'm trying to do 30 different previews, like, you know, of teams that I went and saw last year, like naturally, like some, you're going to have really strong opinions on others. You're not sure. Now we're in the world Kai of transfer portal NIL, not really being sure, you know, what, what, rosters are how players are going to function in a new environment and but air force is not that it's a breath of fresh air for someone that's been you know handicapping college basketball for 20 years 20 plus years and remembers the game the way it used to be this is a a team that returns almost everyone and so for me like i'm i'm super excited about that i'm going to put you on the spot quick here i don't know if you know the answer to this but i do know that in your preview that you, you reference Air Force being top 20 nationally in returning minutes this season. My question is, how many of those teams of the top 20 are power conference teams or in a conference like the Mountain West A-10? Air Force has got to be one of the only ones. Yeah, I would assume it. they – Ah, man, it's a good question. Um, I would assume it is more so the mid to low majors that have that. Uh, I know Purdue and Marquette might be up there in terms of like power five conferences that, that returned a lot of guys, but yeah, it's rare. It's incredibly rare in this day and age, even at a school like air force, uh, that can't really get anybody in the transfer portal. But, uh, you know, when you don't have an IL and you don't have the ability to get guys in the portal, developing from within is the best way to go. And it's credit to Joe Scott that he can keep most of his players from last year. You know, they had one guy transfer out who's pretty important, but for the most part, you said it, this team returns basically everybody four starters, I believe. Yeah, I, I would wonder how many of that top 20 aren't in the Patriot League or the Ivy League, right? Like it, it might be the majority. Oh, <laughs> like those are those are yeah. probably the the place that has a lot of those. But yeah, I'm super excited about this Air Force team, Air Force team. So I'm not even gonna bury the lead. I am much higher on Air Force than what the market is going to be. Obviously, this is a team that was at the bottom of a very good Mountain West uh league last year. They're gonna be at the bottom of most people's previews. This year, there's a good chance they finish near the bottom, but this is a sports betting preview and we get to bet against the number. And that's why I'm so excited about Air Force kind of like being better than than what the market anticipates, because I think they're going to be a really good bet as an underdog. And, you know, I think it's worth noting that 
there's quite a few of the Mountain West teams take a step back last year to this season. Kai, I don't think Air Force is one of them. And I think the perception is they lost their best player in Redis Petratus. But I think in reality, Ethan Taylor is the best player on this team. And he's a name that, that you know, you're going to learn as the season goes on. But talk to me about Joe Scott and the Princeton offense. And, you know, while they have a guy like Taylor, it, it really is the sum of all the parts. You've got four senior starters and another year in like a very complex Princeton offense. And, and just demonstrate how important that is for this team, you know, to our viewers here. Yeah, it's incredibly important. The, the Princeton offense works better. It's a read and react offense, right? So it works better when you have guys that are familiar with each other that have been in the program for several years. And thankfully, Joe Scott has that in, like I said, four starters back. Ethan Taylor and Jeffrey Mills, they're basically one, two in the backcourt. They return. Bo Becker uh, up front in the back uh, in the front court is back. Uh, Byron Brown. These guys have been in the program for several years. They're all seniors. It's super key, especially out of the gates uh, when you're playing in this type of offense. Just knowing uh, uh, what your teammates are going to do is so, so important. They do lose Petritus. That's important. But I really think they have enough coming back to offensively uh, still be a really competitive team. And Joe Scott, not many people probably know a, a lot about him, but he really is a good coach. He had Denver as a top 50 team back in 2013. He had this Air Force program in the top 40 back in 2004. He's done things at programs that really hasn't been done before. Um, so while he had a tough year last year, that was mainly def uh, defense. Like they were horrible defensively. In Mountain West play, if they would have had that defense the entire season, it would have been the worst in the country. So to get that buttoned up, the offense will be there. And I think he can be super competitive in the, in the Mountain West. Yeah, I mean, Petritus is definitely important, but it's worth pointing out that there was stretches last year where he didn't play. I think if you you can go back to early in the season, I want to say he missed maybe seven or eight games in, in succession. And, and Air Force actually played well in those games, but those games were against far different competition than they saw in Mountain West play. And, and I do think that maybe like the other guys on the team sort of like look to him to do something at times during Mountain West play because they were so overmatched in a lot of those games. I mean, you know, if you go back to Mountain West last year, if, if you weren't, if Air Force wasn't playing Wyoming, San Jose State, or Fresno State, they were basically playing a top 25 team. And so they were really like just completely overmatched at times. But, you know, something that, that was interesting to me that I think could be a good barometer of Air Force taking a big step forward this year is their ability to take care of the ball. Because last year they turned the ball over at an alarming rate. And Kai, mm -hmm. when you play a style where you're trying to limit possessions and there's few possessions in the game, you cannot throw those possessions away. And that was the killer right. for Air Force at times, you know, trying to slow the game down, low possessions, but then turning it over at like an alarming rate. So do you think the the sort of the time in the system and another year together with, with Scott eliminates some mm -hmm. of those turnover concerns? Yeah, unfortunately, it's been an issue for this team the last four years under Scott. Um, I, I do think continuity helps that and, and, uh, and age and experience. It's not really the guys coming back's fault that they, they do okay with the ball. It's kind of the reserves, right? They don't have a super deep bench. Uh, they, they don't really have about a bunch of guys past their top four. They can go to and kind of trust with the ball. It is a Princeton offense. Everyone's handling it. you got forwards handling the ball at the top of the key that can lead to turnovers. To your point, when you play 60 possessions a game, you better not turn it over because you will not get a lot of chances to, uh, frankly, overcome the talent disparity. Now, the fact that they do play slow is a reason I think they can be a tough dog. I mean, you don't have many possessions. The variance goes up. And with a team like Air Force that you know can shoot and, and runs a really good sound offense under Joe Scott, I think that makes them pretty intriguing from a betting standpoint. Yeah, I mean, they were a tough underdog last year at times. I believe their two Mountain West wins. Uh, I want to say it was UNLV and New Mexico, both a pretty – Substan I think they were a double-digit underdog and won outright in both of those games. Um, you know, I saw this team last year, Kai. Uh, I saw them play Utah State. It was their Mountain West opener. Uh, they lost by, like, 40, got completely destroyed. <laughs> but there was a stretch in that game where Petritus was out for a stretch. I, I, he, either got, he either tweaked something or got in foul trouble, and Ethan Taylor just took over and actually kind of single-handedly 
kind of sparked a run that got Air Force at least within striking distance, like going into the half. And I was kind of sitting there thinking, man, like he's the guy for this team. He's the one that can create. He, he, you know, just watching them. And I actually got to see Air Force play at Long Island last year. They randomly came over to the East Coast. I went to that game too. And, and that was one of my takeaways there was like, this kid's a stud. And I felt like at times they probably should have made him the focal point of the offense when it was really like Protritus trying to do stuff um, mm -hmm. or, or be like the main creator. But I think some of that was getting into Mountain West play and just being totally like, up against it size-wise and, and skill-wise. So to me, I I think Air Force can, can take a complete step forward, and I think it's going to be through Taylor and his ability to, to create and, and maybe make some shots that you wouldn't necessarily expect Air Force to make in the context of the Princeton offense. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he's a total stud. 6'5 uh, point guard. Again, there's not really a true point guard need in the Princeton offense, but he – We'll have the ball in his hands a lot of the time. Uh, he he shoots well from three. Like he's a really good three point shooter. Then you look at his stats inside the arc; they're not great. I think what part of the problem was with the inexperience in the offense as a whole. This group, you get late in the shot clock and you have to put up tough shots. You have to force things. I think that's probably part of the issue Air Force faced last season. Maybe they get a little quicker looks within the context of their offense with more experience. Uh, you know, unfortunately, that's. That is their goal. They want to take the air out of the ball. They want to play slow. Joe Scott knows this team is not more talented than their opponent. So you want to limit the possessions. You want to up the variance. And unfortunately, that can lead to some tough shots. I wouldn't put too much stock in Ethan Taylor's two-point percentage. I put it in, into the eye test. This guy, like you said, can play. And and being 6'5", athletic, dynamic, Air Force hasn't had a lot of guys that are dynamic, and, and he really fits the bill. Yeah, and that's something, you know, I, I meant to make that point earlier when we were talking about the continuity of this roster. Uh, Scott's really lost, like, a dynamic player every, you know, the last couple of years, Air Force has had a couple of guys transfer out, and, you know, he, he hasn't had this type of continuity or hasn't had maybe his best player coming back, um, you know, like, like he has with this roster this year. Now, I think another big thing, Kai, um, when you're looking at this team in the early going and, and kind of like, you know, how to sort of price them out as like, you know, is, is this a team I really want to play on? Is this a team that I want to start like taking shots with when we get to conference play against some of the big boys in this league? Cause they're definitely going to be an underdog in those situations. Uh, it's going to be their ability to shoot the three. I think air force has to be like a top 53 pointing shooting team nationally to like have any shot at making it into you know, out of like maybe the bottom three or four in this conference this year. But if you look at the guys, the four seniors, and if you if you look at the way that their offense is going to kind of set up, that Princeton offense should create the opportunities for outside shots. And if they can knock them down, I think they could be like much better than people think they're going to be this year. Yeah, I agree. If you can shoot, you're always in the game. And Joe Scott usually has great shooting teams. That's that's something he obviously recruits. Uh, yeah, and, and you know what? If you're looking for kind of another reason to be excited – you know, one guy that, that was playing really well in their in their overseas trip this summer was Luke Kearney. Uh, sophomore, didn't play a lot last year, but he was a leading scorer in a lot of these games. Uh, if he can emerge and be another option that can get a bucket and and play competently on the offensive end, I think that's great for Air Force. The, again, it's going to come down to defense. This team was, like, historically bad, but Joe Scott normally has a pretty solid defense. Like, just two years ago, they were – within the top 170 in Kempom, they fell away to 327. A lot of that was three-point variance both ways. So Wesley Chelikowski becomes a pretty important piece. He's their seven-footer. Not really a shot blocker by any means, but a guy that can put out there with size. I think that's, that, that'll be pretty important for them. Yeah, I was going to ask you what you think about him and, and maybe how Joe Scott might use him because I could see him maybe being a little bit detrimental to the offense and, and how – you know, he, you know, Scott kind of wants to run the offense, but he's definitely going to help them on the defensive end. And like we had already made the point, D defense was an issue for them at times, especially when he got in, into Mountain West play. So, you know, do you think he could, do you think he fits the offensive, like what they're trying to do offensively? Or how do you think they're going to use him? And will it be, you know, is that something you could see hurting them in the early going while they're kind of figuring things out? I have like, um, flashbacks to Colgate trying to play with Keegan records and, and Woodward last year at times. And it being like, 
totally a mess. And then they would take him off the floor and the offense would look great. And so I, I kind of was getting similar vibes here. Yeah. Well, the good news is I think he can shoot. Uh, so he'll, he'll be able to stretch the floor and they will play him at the top of the key. Now, I don't think he was starting in the overseas games. Uh, so you might see a lot of small ball lineups. That's kind of Air Force's thing anyways, because they I mean, it's Air Force. You can't have a guy over six, seven at Air Force. Who's going to fit in the plane? Uh, but but Bo Becker's going to play a lot at the five. Uh, most likely they're going to have to find somebody else within this enormous sophomore class that no one has any idea who's going to play because it's, it's a military school. They have more scholarships than the average school. Uh, I, I would expect Chelikowski to be sort of a 15 minute a game type of player who can provide a little floor spacing at the five, make that offense even more wide open on the offensive end. Uh, defensively, you have to hope that he can provide some semblance of rim protection. Uh, Air Force has had that the last few seasons. It didn't really matter last year. <laughs> they still got killed inside, uh, but it is important for them to, kind of button up the defensive end. So Kai, I want to move on to some some betting predictions and to the schedule in particular. And I'm going to take a, a more bold stance here than I did during our Colorado State preview because I, I I will likely come out of the gate betting on Air Force at any any time I that, that I can get a semi favorable number and even if they're a favorite at home. So they have a very reasonable schedule in the early going. Uh North Alabama, Jacksonville State LIU, Belmont, which could be an interesting game. Like, that should be a, a decent game. Mercyhurst, Sacramento State are all home games. And if you go back to last year, they actually, against those types of teams, were pretty good. And they played most of those types of teams without Petritus. Because, as I said, he was he pretty much didn't play, I think, the first seven, eight games of the season. And I remember they blew out Lindenwood. They had a they they trashed LIU at the game I went to, which was a road game for them. So I kind of feel like they could be a decent favorite in the early going because I don't think they're the odds makers are going to force you to lay like monstrous numbers with this Air Force team, even against lesser competition. Or do you have like an opinion there? Do you remember how they were kind of gauging them last year? Because that's kind of an angle I'm looking at. Yeah, well, uh, I'll tell you what. I think I was on Lindenwood that game, so that was a disappointment. Uh, I thought Lindenwood was more I got, was I got more lucky talented. there. I remember that game. I got, <laughs> I, they hit a shot late to cover. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was watching that game. I was like, what have I done? That This team is terrible. Uh, yeah, I, I think them being more veteran than the teams are going to come in and face at that level are, is super important, and I think they can kind of just cut them to death in the Princeton offense, and the, the home court advantage for Air Force is pretty substantial. Uh, especially outside of Mountain West play, those teams coming in to to face them at, I believe it's altitude. It, it's a tough place to play a top 50, oh, yeah. I think, in home court advantage yep. in Kimpom. That that matters quite a bit. Now, is that baked in the line? Probably, maybe, but I do think it it, it is important. And, and they do fare well against teams of that caliber. I, I think they are, surprised, a pretty disciplined team for the most part. Uh, and, and I think the continuity this year is really going to help them shine early on. Yeah, and then you look at their, you know, they have an interesting game. Uh, it's a true road game at Cal as part of an MTE. Probably get them as a dog there. They come to the East Coast again. I don't know. Air Force likes to do this. They come and play. Last year, they came and played LIU in Delaware. I was, like, shocked to see them in my neck of the woods, so I went to the LIU game. This year, they're coming to play Wright State in Miami of Ohio in, in like, a one-weekend trip to Ohio. Then they go back home, and they've got a road game at Northern Colorado, which is interesting because that's kind of, I think Northern Colorado is up near Colorado State, but that's a true home game for Northern Colorado. So you're definitely going to get a play, playable number on Air Force there. But Kai, you know, regardless of what happens in the non-conference, if they show some signs of life, this has to be a team that you, you're going to be willing to take 10, 11 points in a Mountain West game with, just based on the fact that they did it last year against far better competition or far better mountain West competition, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, it, are you kind of on the same page there? They go and they're catching 11 against like a new Mexico or a UNLV. Do you think you'll be looking to bet air force in that scenario? Yeah, they're a really scrappy dog. It's kind of tough because they've had these moments where they just get absolutely torched. Um, they got blown out a few times in conference play, but they'll have these random games. They just, they, they stay tough. They, they beat UNLV by 32 at UNLV. They won at the pit in New Mexico. They're no pushover. Um, it can be kind of frustrating when you happen to bet on them during the blowout game. Uh, but with the fact that this the Mountain West, besides Air Force and maybe even San Jose State, going down a little bit from last season, 
there's real opportunity for them to hang around. They, they had a lot of close games in conference play despite the blowouts. Um, so yeah, then you're not going to get them as a favorite very often in, in conference play, if at all. But backing them as a double digit dog, I think has usually been a pretty good idea. Is there any shot this team gets into any sort of postseason play, or is that asking too much? I don't think so. I mean, I, I picked them ninth <laughs> in the Mountain West. I could see them maybe finishing eighth, but it's kind of the nature of the beast. They're at a, such a, a disadvantage talent-wise in this conference compared to everybody else. Um, it, it's just really hard to win if you're Air Force in this league. And that is the beauty of being a sports better. We don't need Air Force to win. We just need them to stay within the number. Uh, and I hope for my sake that they do it often because I have a feeling that until until the uh, – you know, the word is out, which with Air Force basketball, I think that would take a while, Kai. I don't think the uh, yep. there, there's going to be many people on the Air Force bandwagon. You know, you might have to get to February where they're, you know, running off multiple uh, upset wins for that to be the case. I think there is going to be a ton of value on this team. And I would not hesitate. That early portion of the schedule is very soft. A lot of home games. And if this team is what I think they're going to be right together, right from the start, don't really need to figure anything out. You've got basically your roster from last year. I think they could win and cover all of those early games. So they're a bet on team for me without question. Kai, one more time, tell the people where they can find you and three man weave this year. Yes, sir. Three man weave is at three MW underscore CDB on Twitter. And all our previews this year can be found on burner exclusives.com. We will have all 364 teams previewed on that site thousand words ish each on every single team every single conference those are rolling out right now it's outstanding stuff everyone should check that out and head on over to the wager talk youtube channel also give us a like and subscribe but head on over to the wager talk youtube channel where we will have all 30 previews in a playlist so you can go right through them it should help you prep for the for tip off on november 4th and give you know, Follow me at Adam Trigger W or at Adam Trigger WT on all platforms uh, for more college basketball content this season.